Hi there, it's Kathy Howes with Be Creative with Kathy. Um, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I like to do videos here to show you some of the projects that I've been working on. I'll try to get rid of some glare, but oh well. Anyway, so let me show you today's project. Today's project is a cute little Santa box here. Let me get the little tag there so it shows. It looks like this. I thought it was really cute and I'll tell you in a minute how it inspired me and how to come up with this project. But first, I want to let everybody know that I have one more. Well, really, I have one and a half. One packet is halfway spoken for. I haven't had the final, yes, I want the packet. But I have one more packet for my November 2023 Christmas paper craft class. So what it is, it's um, three cards. They look like this. Thanks to Cindy Graffy. Gosh, Cindy, I hope I said your name right. I'm terrible at names. Anyway, I cased her card. And for this card, if you do it online and not at my home, which I live in North Denver in Colorado, you're welcome to come to my home. But then this card, all you need is to find a stamp that would fit here. I send you all of the paper, ribbon, embellishments, everything you need. You just have to supply your own stamps and ink and adhesive. But that's what this card looks like. Look how cute that is. And then this card using that little trucking along stamp set and punch looks like this and then the marriage trees like that and then thanks to stamp with aloha i cased her project as this and now normally this is tied together with a cute little string but i'm going to show you what's inside here it's a little box of tags whoops now this is what if you do it online this is what the front of your box like i said there's no stamping you'd have to stamp your own this is stamped, so the front of your box would look like that. But it has all these little tags in there. I'm going to put the link below that explains what, what the difference is between the online and in-person in class, just so you have all the information. And then the last project is a really pretty, cute little ornament that looks like that. So like I said, like the, the um, gold ring will be in your packet. All the cut paper will be in your pocket, everything except the adhesive, the inks, and the stamps. Like one more, well, one and a half <laughs> more kits. So if you're interested, all you have to do is email me. If um, you're watching this on YouTube, my email will be below in the ink, the link description. It'll be below in the description. And if you're on Facebook, just send me a message and I'll give you all the information if you're interested in that class. Okay, enough talk about that. Let's go back to my little box. So I saw a little box like this. Look how cute this is. And it was on a demonstrator site or something on Facebook, Pinterest, who knows. And I thought how cute that is. Now they made this box out of these hold on let me get it for you these add-ons from paper pumpkin see these are five by seven cards so they're huge well bigger than what i'm used to and look how pretty they are whoop let go so look how pretty they are they have all that sparkly you know in your paper pumpkin kit this month which was well this month october's whoops last month you got that um glitter glue this has like that glitter glue all along the bottom there so if you decide to make this project the only tip i want to give you is look make sure you leave room for your tabs all of my pretty glitter glue <laughs> is on the bottom here there's a little bit up here but make sure you leave room for your dies to cut out the bottom i cut off the bottom too soon and then i didn't have enough to get some of that pretty glitter glue on the side of my box that's just letting you know for example what not to do and then i just put those cute little bears on there to decorate my box. It was a really fast, simple, just wanted to see how it worked out project with those. Okay, let's go on. There's a lot you can do with those add-ons. In fact, I have a video waiting that I wanna show you what I did, but we'll see if I get to that. Back to my little box here. So what I used is the, um, let me find them here. <laughs> Maybe, nope, not those, but we're gonna use those too. But it's these, these um, tricks and treats dies. And it has this cute little box right here in the tricks and treats dies. Now these are in the mini catalog. They coordinate with the tricks and treats stamp set like this, right? And then you have these little pieces here that cut the holes. If you want the holes in the front of the box. Now I wanted the holes in the side of the box. So I didn't use that piece. I only used this piece. From these dies. So let's go ahead since I have the die out and cut um, that piece of paper. So I'm bringing my die cut machine here 
and my plates. Now, don't tell anybody because I like to run my die cut machine a little bit like I'm not supposed to. So I have the platform number one. There it is. I have the plate number two. And then I use this magic mat. Now, I told you in my last video I'd show you share the link with the magic mat. I couldn't find it. You'll have to just Google. And all the magic mat does is save on your plates. So then I don't have to use my plates or replace my plates so often. And I like the way it cuts. But I have a piece of real red cardstock here. It's 5 inches by 11. And the only reason I cut it down to 5 inches was so it could fit through my machine. And that's about the size of the die. So we need two of those. Let me quickly cut those out. Oh, I put the handle right over here. So the cool thing about the die is that it also not only cuts it out, but it scores it. So on those lines where you need to fold for your box to have the bottom, it has those score lines in it too. Here's one. Let me hurry and cut the... Now watch it not fit on here. I thought I had... Oh no, it fits on here. There, talk about a... I was going to call it a brain fart, but that's not appropriate. So cut that one out too. Now we have two little pieces for a box. Now I'll be honest with you that if you use this plate with your um, die cut machine, it loses its warranty. It's not um, stamping up recommended authorized. I don't know the proper word, but if you do and but mine hasn't hurt my machine. My machine's tougher than you think. So um, I like to use that little mat on there. But don't tell anybody I do that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and fold on the score line. Oh, no, no, first we need to do some more die cutting because I wanted to put this little ruffle up here, only I didn't have any dies. I didn't think I did. I found some that did a little ruffle like that. So you know what I did is I took, you know, these scraps that you have all the time from making the inside or the um, mat to your card and they're a half inch because you cut your card stock down from eight and a half to eight to four hope that makes sense of you if you know what i'm talking about then you know what i'm talking about and i thought i could use those with these scallop edge dies because this die right here look at there's the perfect scallop edge to put along our box so i'm going to take those and i'm no i was going to cut it two at a time but i think it's better if i don't and this time i'm going to put my handle on the right side okay so go back with that same sandwich and then lay well, you know, I can cut both at a time because I have two sides of my rectangle. This is brilliant. Sometimes, you know, every squirrel finds a nut. So let me put this. Maybe I'm the nut that finds the squirrel. I don't know. But I'm going to put this here, right? And my cardstock here. And now I can cut out both of them at the same time. I didn't even think of that last night when I was making this, or was it yesterday? But we're going to run that through the die cut machine here. And when you do yours, I should have done this. I suggest you go as close as you can to the edge of your paper. That gives you just a little bit more um, room to um, glue those on to your box. But, yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, so we're done with those. We have our little edges. Now, let's quickly throw the box together, and then we'll do the rest of our die cutting when we're ready to make our tag. Okay. So here's all the little pieces. I'm going to use my bone folder here and just fold on those score lines. Get a nice crisp box that will hopefully sit flat. That's always my goal. And I think if we use our bone folder and get those um, score lines nice and crisp, I think that's going to help. And then there's one more over here. So then we have one of our box or side of our box or the front or the back is really what it is. We're going to fold here, quickly fold here, and then fold here. And now because this is thick cardstock, I thought it would be easier to have these, have the fold line in them before I glued these on. So then that way I only have to fold one um, layer of paper. I hope that makes sense. But it's really me just kind of cheating. Um, so there's this this perforated or this dotted edge right here, and that's how I'm going to line it up to my box to make sure it's straight. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue. You know what, though? 
so I don't get any glue on my desk here. I'm going to throw my silicone mat on there. That way we won't get everything sticky. But just a little fine line of glue right there underneath that dotted edge. And then um, I did put it on the good side of the paper because, you know, when you die cut something, you have the, the top and the bottom is what we'll call it. And I put the glue on the good edge so that when I lay this down, it's going to have that pretty... Sorry, I can't do two things at once. And I'm going to line it up with this edge here. That little, see how it kind of has that, well, you can't see it on the camera, but it kind of has like this little corner there. Nope, I still can't see it. And I'm going to line it up there because then, get it nice and straight, press that down. Then with some paper snips here, I'm going to just trim Hold on, wrong paper snips. The paper, just trim that off like this. Okay, and then over here, I'm going to fold this over where it goes, and then I'm going to trim this part off here. Not the red part, just the white. So now, where it has this fold, it's going to be able to fold. Wait, and I didn't get it straight. I'm going to get it straighter. There. Do what I do, not what I say. So see how it has that nice edge now when you fold it over there. That's easier. Looks like that. Okay, let's do the same thing to this side. See if I can do it more gracefully this time. <laughs> okay, set this down, put some glue on there. Now I'm only going to glue now to that corner where the dotted line is because that's where I'm going to set my cardstock and line it up with that corner this time. Line it up just like that. Now when I trim this, looks like that. And then I'm going to fold this back this way and then just trim that. It was a lot easier. Do that. Fold it this way and then trim it. <laughs> Learn as you go, huh? That's why I show you videos so you can know what not to do. I'll show you the easier way by the second time around. Okay, let's go ahead and put our box together now. So a little bit of liquid glue on this tab here. And I'm going to try to get a thin layer of glue all over. Remember with the liquid glue, this Tombow liquid glue, a little bit goes a long way. And then, look, and I put it together backwards. <laughs> I sure did. Doggone it. Let me figure out what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this off. Yep, I got to tape it to the other side. That's not good. Like I said, boy, make sure you line your box up and have it going the right way before you put your trim on there. It won't take long to fix it. And since I have the glue on there already, I'm going to go ahead and just glue it down. There we go. Now I'll put my trim on this side so that it's on the right side. Can't pretend like you didn't see any of that. And I did it on the wrong side again. Looky there. Everybody's probably warning me, Kathy, it's the wrong side. And I'm not even paying attention. There. Now it's on the right side. Now, my little box, let me just fold these the right way. Phew! Look at Still going to turn out just fine with all my little... Um, yeah, I forgot what they're called. Ruffles on the front of my box. I'm using my bone folder and get that fold in the right way. Make sure that's nice and glued at the top there. There we go. Like I said, every time I'll show you what not to do. Okay, then again, on this little tab, and now I have it going the right way, we're going to just put a little bit of glue here. And then you can kind of fold the box down like this and then just lay it over and it'll glue that edge down and then you have your little box just like that that easy so on the tabs here let's see if i can do this right i'm going to figure out which is the front 
and to me I can't tell the difference they both look okay so I'm not going to worry about it I'm going to just go ahead and put a little bit of liquid glue on the outside of the set of the side tabs like this and then on the inside of what I would say the front tab like this and then you lay those two down this one on top and now you lay that one over do you see how i did that now all your glue is covered up your front still looks good because it has a nice fold here i'm going to set it down and then use my bone folder to get that down and sealed nicely so see it still sits flat because i set it up this way push that down and it has a nice flat bottom just like that phew all that work i got my box together all righty good deal now I have a little strip here. This is, um, I'm going to find out for sure. It's 11 inches by three and a fourth. Now, normally you can go to my blog and you can get um, all the measurements from my cards and everything. This time, really, there's no measurements. You saw it was mostly scraps. So all I'll have on my blog is the um, supply list. So you can see it there. And uh, you have to just get the measurements here. And this time I know I just measured it. This is 11 inches by three and three fourths. However, we need a three and three fourths inch square. So I'm gonna bring in just my mini paper trimmer here and cut this off at three and three, or at three fourths of an inch. I hope I said that right early, three fourths of an inch. And just give me a little square, just like that. That's for the inside of his buckle. I also have, unless I've lost it here, a one and one eighth inch square and this is the foil gold rib, um, gold paper. Now this one, I use the glimmer paper. Remember that adhesive back paper? It's all sold out, so you can't get it anymore. But the gold silver or the foil paper will look just as well. Okay, so now with this strip, on the front of my box, I'm going to put the seam to my belt here in the front of my box, and then I'll cover it up with the buckle. So that way the back looks good and the front. And I'm going to just guess about where the front is. That looks good. And then I'm going to just take it around. I got my, there we go. And just pinch it as I go. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and make sure it lines up so it's straight across. Where did my bone folder go? Did I put them away? And I'm going to just fold that so it's nice and straight. I'm just going to keep going around my box. I guess it doesn't matter. I keep trying to figure out which I like better for the front or the back. And I really can't tell, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to pinch here. And then we're going to pinch here. And then fold that with our bone folder. Get a nice, crisp, straight fold. Okay, now you can see that this is too long, so we need to trim this down just a hair. So I'm going to set that here and figure where I want it. And then with just a pair of paper snips, I'm going to come along and put a little, just a little cut like that. So I don't know how big this is, but this less this from 11 is how big you want your belly band. I think it's easier just to do it like that. So let's put a little bit of liquid glue along here. glue our little belt or belly band. I guess if it's a card, it's a belly band, but for today for Santa, it's a belt. I'm going to stop there so I can get it on without making a total mess. It's Monday, and you can tell it's already showing from how I put the beginning of my box together. And look, I've lost my thing. I'll have to glue him back on too. My ruffle. Okay, put a little bit more glue here. And then line that up. And like I said, this would be the front of my box where you can see that little seam, but we'll cover it up with the buckle. Okay, let me, this is bugging me. Let me put this back on. Let me put a little bit of glue here. There we go. Good as new. No one knows the difference. <laughs> okay, let me put a little bit of glue on the back of that three-fourths inch square. 
and then just put that in the middle of our gold foil piece. I am all thumbs. Now look, I went and got glue. Where's my silicone mat? I went and got glue all over my belt buckle. There we go. Ooh, nice shine there. I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. And in fact, if I had some gold foil here, I would cut a new one. I'm not even going to put this on my little Santa Claus because I don't want that gold to have that glue icky stuff all over there. So I would take this and then line up this um, here with the center of my belt so it looked like it was a continuation of the buckle. But I'm going to redo that. That's terrible. I did bad there. I don't want that on my box. So then with just a um, hole punch here, I'm going to come down and I'm going to just guess about where on the side of my box, make sure it's centered this way, right? And then I'll do the same thing now that I know where it punches on that red the same way. So then I have the holes on the side of my box. And I'm going to take some ribbon and I'm going to use this red ribbon from the Real Red and Burlap Ribbon Pack. And I'm going to stick it through the hole. Maybe I am. I'm going to cut it more to an angle so I can get it through that hole. There we go. And then just tie a little knot on the inside of our box. And I'm not going to pull it too tight because I want my knot pretty big so that it doesn't pull through the box. This ribbon might, you know what? I think I changed my mind. I'm going to not use that ribbon if it pulls through that simple. Let's try this ribbon. Now this is that polka dot ribbon that's on the um, online exclusives. You can't find this in a catalog, but that's a little bit bigger. It's got that cute, those cute polka dots that will match the center or match the belt buckle. So let's use that instead and that won't pull through. It's nice and thick. I thought when I was making the box that that might be too thick, but maybe it's better off that way so it won't pull through. I'll make sure I twist it so that my dots are on the outside. Now I'm going to trim off this extra right here so I don't want that on the inside of my box. Like that. And then how long do I want my handle about, what do you think about there? That looks good. I'm going to leave a little bit of room here to tie my knot. I'm going to put it at an angle here. And put that through my box. Tie a little simple knot on this on the inside of the box. Put away that little extra part away from our knot and then pull that through. And then look how cute. Isn't that cute? I do like that ribbon with the, it was not too big at all. I think that turned out really cute. All righty. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up our little box. I'm going to use the um, Sending Cheer stamp set and dies to add a little box. Now, let me tell you something about this <laughs> Sending Cheers um, bundle. The retired list and the carryover list came out today. So everything that's in this catalog that is runs from September through December. So effective January 3rd, this catalog's in good. We'll have a replacement catalog and celebration coming out, but this has a retired list. So the retired and carry over list came out and this bundle here is retiring. It won't be available anymore. However, it's on the retirement list at 40% off. So if you go to order this, now that starts, where did my list go? Cause it has the date as to when it starts. And I printed out to show so I'd have notes. Here we go. Here's what the last chance looks like. It's two pages really long. This is the carryover list. 
So if you can get a hold of the last chance list down here, the um, sending dies are 40% off and the stamp sets 40% off. So as starting November 21st, if you order this bundle, make sure you order it with stamp set and die separately so you get the 40% off. Instead of as a bundle, you'd only get the 30% off. But these won't be carrying over to the next. As of these, these dies that I used to make the box and this one, they're also on the retiring list. They won't be available after January 3rd or really starting November 21st, they're available while supplies last, but they're not at a discount like these are. I was kind of excited to see that those were at a discount, but okay. So out of here, we need, we're gonna use this little die here to make Santa's hat and this one. We need the pom-pom for the top of his hat and I'm gonna put a little tag on there. So I'm gonna use all of these dies. Bring in my machine here. I have a little scrap. of white and I'm going to first lay that little tag on there and you see what I'm doing and his little pom-pom or the fluff of his hat and that um, top of his hat and then on this piece this is just the leftover scrap from the box on that card base you know that card stock I'm going to just lay his hat on there and run these through the die cut machine Again, my hand is on the wrong side. So today, I would say my video is what most people call a hot mess. I have not been organized. I've been saying the wrong thing. I've been putting stuff together wrong. So thanks for sticking with me. I guess sometimes you see what Kathy's really like. And boy, this is me at my finest, let me tell you. So let's see if I can get... Yep, there he goes. And that little fluff out... I probably have to get my, yeah, let's get our take a pick tool and poke that out of there. Nope. This one. And then we have our little tag here. And then we'll punch out our hat. There we go. And then from that stamp set, I just have that little for you on there. And I'm going to even use my silicone mat to stand on its stamp on. It's as good as the pierce mat when it comes to that cushion below your, um, or under your photopolymer stamps. And then with the hole on the left side, I'm going to stamp it to the right and put that for you. Just like that. Look how cute that is. While that ink dries, I'm going to glue my little ruffle to Santa's hat and a little pom-pom here on the top. Oops, I'm upside down. Because I don't know if you noticed or not, but these dies, can you see, have that embossing and give those... Um, two little elements there, a little bit of life. Okay, then with some baker's twine, and I'm gonna just cut off a, I don't know, that much, it's probably too much. I'm gonna thread it through these little holes here. And then I'm gonna attach it to the ribbon on my little Santa box. with no belt here. We'll pretend like he has his belt on there, but I'm really gonna make a new one of those without the, the mess of the glue on the gold. And I would take my eraser to that gold piece and try to get that glue off, but all it would do is scuff up, scuff up the, <laughs> scuff up the foil piece, and I wouldn't like how that looked either. So I'll have to get a new one. Should have brought some more scraps with me. So just tie this around in a knot like that. And then we have that cute little tag. All righty, let me, all right, hang on two seconds. My gold scraps are right here. Because now it's gonna bug me that I don't get that finished. You bring in that little paper trimmer. Like I said, this is one and an eighth. 
So I'm just going to cut a little one and an eighth inch square here. I have some more of those scraps. Did I throw those in the trash? Hmm, I guess I can't finish my, um, oh no, it's right here. Looky there. And this one is three fourths. This time I'll put a little bit of glue on there and I'll try not to slide it around and make a mess in the center of my gold. Throw that one in the trash. Look pretty good? Yeah, looks better than the first one, huh? And then with just a dimensional, here they are. There, and now this way you'll at least see my finished project. Then I didn't get it in the center of my box. There we go, just like that. Look how cute. So the gold foil, I think, looks as good as the glimmer paper. Let me show you another box I did, because once I got on a roll, I thought it would be cute to make a little elf box. So look how cute this is. So I just took the same hat. I used um, the ruffle, which is really these um, basic border edge dies. Now I have two sets in here because I cut for classes and stuff. It's faster. I purchased two of these, but I just used this little rickrack die right here and cut that for his little um, neck, I guess you'd call it. And then I added the top to his hat or the piece to the top of the bottom of his hat. This is just a hole punch with some black paper that made it look some little buttons. And so that's what his little box looks like that. And then, of course, we'll bring in that paper pumpkin add-on box. So there's my project for today. <laughs> Thanks for suffering through me. I know it was like I think they, they call it one hot mess. I always thought hot mess was a compliment. But in this case, I don't think it is. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next Monday. Have a great week. Bye-bye.